this is this is part of our new format, a part of our new uh, content creation format for you to bring you into our world is to just turn the camera on and show you what's happening as we create. So we have some goals here in the shop. So we got the camera on. He's really uncomfortable because he likes to have things really planned ahead of time, but we're not doing that. So we're going to fumble around and it's going to be awkward and uncomfortable because it's new. So if you really hate that, then just come back for our other content, but we're going to work on this. Okay. This will get a lot of comments because like you're doing that all wrong. You know, you messed that you up. Are? You're doing that. Thing. Okay. Well, okay. Right. So this is what we're doing. Got, right, some, old, we, got some old pistons. They have pretty good rings on. Kim says they're pretty good rings. I don't know. They, I guess they could be. We have these out of a slant six that are definitely bad rings because they're really. Oh, they're like here's the ring land. They're loose in there like this. Yeah. And here's one of them uh, that's out of that piston. So we're gonna use these pistons, and we're gonna take these rings, these used rings, and put them on this used piston because they're way better than the rings that are on. Where is your phone? Because I have to. Film a short of you using the ring expander. Don't you want to do a short of using the ring expander? So we're going to do a short and oh, yeah, it's over there on the charger. Man! I told you that. Well, no, just, just pretend like that's not here. Turn the phone on for me so I can record. And then all you're going to do is so say, we just have to. E, language, now I got to edit. Demontergizes. I don't know if this is going to work. Oh, well, then that makes it even better. I thought that was the, the tool. Are you ready to make it into a short? Ready? I don't know if this is the right tool. Don't know if it's going to work. I've got to remove this ring, this compression ring from this piston. And I think this may work, but it may not work those like C-clip expanders? Yeah, I think that's what they're supposed to be for, but I'm already struggling with it because it's not being nice. It's all greasy and slippery and... What if you get it from the side? Instead of now I got so much oil on my hands, I'll never get this out of here. This is not planned out well. Is any engine builder's going to look at this and go, you idiot. Monkey build an airplane. I got a jam so nobody can get it out. I don't want to edit, so you're going to have to start over. You're probably at about three minutes of fumbling around. No. I've got to get a different angle because all I'm seeing is your hands. Well, because I'm trying to do something and I'm trying to do it for the camera. I can't even begin to do it without thinking about the camera. I'm not sure this tool is going to work to get this compression ring off here, but I'm sure going to try. And so I might get it off. The good thing, it's a ring we're not going to use. I can't grab it. It's too greasy. That's not the way to do that, but I got it out. It's an old ring that we don't care about. So, <laughs> how not to use these tools? So now I got to get the, the compression ring out of here, which means I got to pick it out. Which is well, the good news is it doesn't have a lot of tension to it. This is probably not the thing to use, but I don't really care about this compressor. This uh, oil ring. You can see I do this every day. I haven't done it in 50 years. Well, I probably done it 40 years ago. So, if you're following the channel, these this is a piston out of the '66's uh, engine that we took to No Name Nationals, and that engine is is worn out. And uh, it needs.
needs, uh, it needs, it just needs rings. Uh, and the oil pan was leaking because of a badly installed gasket. So we are going to reuse these pistons because it's the the bore is not all sloppy. So this is an oil ring. But the, the rings are the rings were whooped as bad as any set of rings I've ever seen. Um, and we want to make a tool short of cleaning the ring lands with a broken ring. This is a this is the bad ring we just took out of here, right? Well, yeah. The the really really bad ring is that one. And then the second ring is probably not as worn as the top. But we're going to use these rings on this, right? Maybe, but not right now. Not tonight. Oh, this is so worn out it may not work. Okay, so yeah, we're going to do we're going to do a short. Okay. While we're doing this, and I'm going to try to break this. Hopefully, I don't hurt myself. Okay, get the camera. Get ready. Okay, but in order to do that, you've got all the light at your back, which makes your face black. And it, it doesn't Wait, translate well. Always end up like this. Well, because I didn't set us up. I, I just, I set this here and you started working. Can we move that light out so it's in my face a little bit? You have to be where I'm sitting. I've got to move all the cameras around. You just did that. I know. That's how it goes. How about that light? Or I guess like maybe I have left light, I don't know. That's how it is in the shop. You just gotta keep moving, moving the camera around, around and around and around and around. I don't know where my phone went. Mm-hmm. Is this all? Just be huh? Well, I don't know. It's all tipsy. Yeah, it was very tipsy. There was something else I wanted to do. This is the bad ring. Uh, you want me to get that? Here, I'll get you the... One of them stick, and one of them stay. I think this one I just pulled off. Uh, I don't know which one that is. Oh, this one's the really bad one, yeah. Okay. That's the top Okay, so you're not going to care if I break this. Oh, you can break either one of those ones. They're okay. all bad. So, I'm going to try to break it. So. Well... <clears throat> Are you wearing gloves? I don't want you to cut. No, I'm not wearing gloves. Now I have to wash my hands. Gloves. Oh, that's not. Oh, that's not. That's not cleaner. I just put something on my hands, and it's not what I expected. That saying: Start before you're ready. They tell content people that all the time. Start before you're ready. Tell what kind of people? People making content to start before you're ready. Start now before you're ready. Because if you wait till you're ready, you, you never start. Okay, we got you adjusted in again. I got the video adjusted. Are you? I'm going to try to show you how to clean a ring land in this piston that we're going to use. This is an old piston ring. You break the old piston ring. Now you have a tool. You take this tool, you go in there, and you scrape out any, any stuff that you don't want in there. And you clean the ring land out. And then you clean the second ring land out. The, uh, Compression ring land out. These aren't too bad. Sometimes there's a lot of carbon, a lot of crap up in there. This one's pretty clean. But there, that's the tool you use. You take a broken ring, an old ring, you snap it, and then that's your tool. And save these. Put them in your, wipe them off. Put them in your toolbox. Use them next time. Broken ring. Good tool. Okay, we got a short out of that. How long was it? 51 seconds. Okay, let me see it. Critical of myself. All right, so we have shifted, pivoted to a different. Sh you want to talk it through once, or do you want? No, to I'm gonna. I've got to just give me a second here, so I have my act together, because I don't have my act together. <clears throat> Might have to do two or three takes, but yeah, I'm.
watching this judge, and he'd be talking, you know, a, a defendant. And he could look over here like this, and he goes, shh. <laughs> people over there chattering all these. And then all of a sudden, he gets quiet in the courtroom again. Don't talk while I'm talking. <laughs> This is a follow-up because I showed everybody how these work and then they didn't work and I got mad and threw them on the floor. These are kind of a Chinese version of a thing that's supposed to open up a battery cable. People said I stuck it in from the wrong end. It does not fit. It doesn't go in there. Somebody suggested I grind it off. I suppose I could grind it off. But here's my snap-on ones. A little more expensive, but you know the good thing about expensive stuff? You stick them in there and they work. You squeeze it like that and it opens that right up. So, that's the difference. Snap on tool, Chinese tool. I guess I could grind it. So, I don't know. I prefer these, but I guess either one will work if you have a grinder. So, uh, battery cable spreader tool. Can you not review it right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. I want to see what I've done. Yeah, I, 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 I'm like, I like immediate. If we don't need to re-record it, can you move it off the side? And I'm going to show you what's... Where, uh, where do you want to put this battery cable? Because this is a part for your car, and the car is already outside. Uh, Ooh, that came really I'm close really to sorry. Place. I didn't mean to get it close to the face. Okay, I know that. It just happened. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I realized... Well, you missed. As I was whipping that I, I was... You, that was probably... You, the that. important thing is you missed my nose. I tried to hit your nose, but I missed. <laughs> I'll get it next time. Okay, so here's the setup. I'm working on a cylinder head, and I'm trying to remove, extract a stud from the cylinder head. And... Ah, shoot, I hit my head. Here's all the tools involved, and we can remove them once you understand the setup and whether you want or don't want to talk about each individual part. But I'm trying to... Yeah, I kind of like don't like the way you do it, but uh, I, maybe you should do this as a long one. I, I don't... Because uh, I'm, I'm not... I'm, I don't really like the way you do it, but you do it, and it works, so... Well, let me explain the setup. Okay. If you don't want to do a short about... It, that's fine. You don't have to. A lot of stuff. Uh, I know. I know. I'm. I'm trying. I'm struggling here. I'm struggling a lot. I'm going to talk you through my experience, and you can see if it becomes a short. This is going to move for a minute. We might bring it back. Okay. I'm removing these studs, manifold studs, from the cylinder head, and they're in there tight. And I'm heating them, and I'm tapping them, and I'm turning, and they're not coming off. Now, I can get a good grip with these, but I don't want to wrench on these. These are little precision things. Well, you know and, what I mean? and if you're way out here, you don't have a lot of mechanical advantage. Right. I don't want to hurt these. I like these. So I'm not going to abuse this tool. This tool, I, I cannot squeeze hard enough with this tool to get a grip. So no good. Right? Good pliers, but just, they're not up to not the task. Not for that. They're all right? cool for that. These, if I grab way out here, I cannot squeeze, I can't get a bite if I grab way out here with the shaman locks, right? And if I grab in here, they don't grab. Yeah, they're enough. too big. And if I try and grab up there, it just comes off. No good. Not helpful. But these got a really good bite if you get them down in here, but they don't go. These, right? Um, when I closed in the center, they weren't, they were doing the same thing as this. Wasn't enough. So, what I did was I closed these down, and I took the angle grinder, and I, I, I notched the front of this. They're cheap, they're, they're, you know, okay. they're hyper tough brand generic. Well, I know and I mean. even had to, I you even had to nick just a little bit. You made them so they closed tighter. I made them so they closed to where they will bite into this stud. And it still couldn't get these to release. I had to use this to get them to release. But trying to take them out while individually squeezing.
squeezing as hard as you can and resetting and going a sixteenth of a turn each time with this. And the thing of it is, is to really get them out because the big problem is, is these go into water jacket. So there's a big ridge of rust on the very tip of this. So to get it out, you have to work it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth or else you'll snap it off in the head. So trying to go back and forth and back and forth with this, I was giving myself blisters in the palms of my hand. So modifying this tool that has enough handle length to get a good strong bite and enough jaw strength to get a good bite here so that I can work them in and out. I had to make okay. the perfect yeah, modified, tool. It's another modified tool. That okay. was like a three minute explanation to you and there's no way you're going to make that into a one minute video. No, but I can, I can, uh, I can eliminate some of this because all the tools that won't work are not that important. Okay, so, and why are you taking these out? Placing them. To remanufacture that head, all the hardware has to be removed. Because that's a machine surface that has to be cleaned properly. Okay, so you have to remove these to, to clean that machine surface. So all these have to come out. They have to come out. Yeah. Okay, so now I know what I'm talking about. Or remember when we were pulling one out, it was busted off, and we used this to cut it, pull it out. Because it was busted off. Yeah, I just don't. I, yeah, I just don't remember why. I didn't remember. But it seemed to me like some you had to replace with longer ones, and some, and I don't know which ones. In the other are. head, yeah, these I are don't. the short ones. They're not long enough for the, the application because they go through the manifolds and, and then they go through those washers. Fine and coarse. Yeah. Which goes where? The coarse goes into the cylinder head. It goes okay. in the water jacket, and that makes them inherently hard okay. to get out okay. because okay. they're going to rust at the tip. Just yeah, I want, like I want this thing. and this out of here. Okay. Just extra shit. See, I like this because it gives you the idea of... Uh, okay, yeah, that, and that, that's right. I'm going to probably use that. Props! Got to get all the props set up. In my mind, it was going to be really good. Sometimes when you start talking... That's when you realize, like, oh man, this is a lot of talk. Do you want this on here? Yes. You do? Okay. I'm going to use it. Okay. Do you want me to, let me... Um... Just let the cord dangle down here. Oh, that was really filthy. See, this is a tool. Shirt sleeve. Clean the phone. I hate it. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Everything's a tool if you're desperate enough. Let's. Everything's a tool. I've watched you a lot of times when you're under a car working, your shoe becomes a tool and you just ram onto a wrench and you get something loose. And then you go over there and then you go over there and use your hands. A rubberized impact suppression. Okay. Yeah, foot smasher tool. Foot smasher. Yes, in Italy they do that with grapes to make wine. You do it under a car, wham, get a transmission cross member loose. Yeah, nobody's going to want to eat that transmission cross member now that you stuck your feet in it. Drink that wine. <laughs> okay. I'm going to start as and if gonna, and and you try. walk through it, but you're, there's no yeah, way yeah, you're going to do that. Let's just try it. Let's just try it. Okay. Ready? There's a bunch of these studs in the head. This is a slant six, but there's a fine end and a coarse end. The coarse end screws into the head and it goes into a water jacket. But you got to pull them all out because there's a machine surface there that you got to clean. So you need all these studs out of there because there's a water jacket in there. It gets all nasty and rusty in there, and they don't unscrew very nicely. So Kim was trying to use these vice grips, but they're they're you've got a nice handle, but they're that part's too big. Same with this. So what she did, was she took this grinder and ground in there, and that made this area smaller. So then, she could grab onto the stud with these. We're going to take them too tight now. Grab onto that stud with these, and then she could work it back and forth, and work it back and forth, and work it back and forth, and you got to do that to break that rust loose, and pretty soon, Keep putting oil on it, pretty soon you can get it loose and you can pull it out. But the trick to that is to get like this. 
cheap vice grips that aren't vice grips. They are um, hyper tough, whatever brand that is. So she didn't mind grinding on it and fixing it to make it work the way she needed it. So modified tools. Was it like three minutes? Yeah. Three and a half. No, what was it? 117. Yeah, okay, I thought it was too long. Oh my god. Okay, we're gonna try it again. And now I gotta just like not say so much. Because I'm thinking of shit as I go and I can't do that. Okay, let's do it again. Maybe instead of... I don't even need to have these here. Let's do it again. Just, you yep. got it. Yep. I want to see how you do it, and I have suggestions, but let's see how you do it. Because it might be... Okay. There's a bunch of these studs in a slant six head, probably in other heads too, but they, they're in there, and they're along a machine surface, and you have to get all these studs out to clean the machine surface. And... Where they're screwed into the head, they go into a water jacket. So there's all nasty rust and everything down in there. So when you try to unscrew them, they don't come out. So, Kim was using a pair of vice grips. Except this part in here was too big to, to fit that. So what she did was she took this grinder and ground these out. So these tips will be closer together. And also, this part will be closer together. And she could grab this, the studs. And then she could work them back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and put oil and eventually get them to unscrew. But the only reason she was able to use these is because she ground these tips off so they close tighter. And we don't mind doing this. It's a cheap, hyper-tough brand vice grips. Not real good stuff, but they work. So don't feel bad about modifying your tools if you need to. You went over Oh my God, how many seconds? By five seconds. <sighs> this I, is a hard one. Yeah, you're trying to put too much into it. Well, yeah, I am. Okay. Instead of telling the story about the stud. Okay, I'll, I'll drop the stud story. Except for reference of size. You can use the stud for... I'm not going to say much about it. Okay, let's go again. You could... Okay, let's just, let's just, just go, go again. Just go again? Okay, because I have suggestions. Okay. Ready... We have to get these studs out of a head, and where they screw in, there's a water jacket on the back side, so they get rust in there. So when you try to unscrew them, they don't come out, because there's rust there. So, try to use vice grips on them, but this part of the vice grips is too big, yet they won't grab. So, what you do is you take this, and you grind those tips out. So now, this area in here is much smaller, and you're able to grab, oops, you're able to grab the, uh, that's a failure. Okay, but you were on track. That oh, yeah, I know, minute. but at, until I failed, don't be afraid to modify a cheap tool. It uh, makes it makes a good tool. You got it? 58? Oh, God, 58. Let's see. Sometimes it'll be off a second or two and you'll load it up. No, it's 58. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna pause. We're sweeping. <laughs> oh, you're we were, we were sweeping. So we didn't live stream tonight, but we did get some things done. A lot of tidying and little things. Yeah, look at how clean this place is. You can't tell. <laughs> That's, that gives you an idea how dirty it was. Yeah, you can't tell. It doesn't look any different, but we know it's different. There's a, look, there's one surface that's empty. And you know what this surface is for? We're going to put something on it. Pistons. We're going to get the pistons. pistons ready to put in the motor, but we're not going to do that tonight. We are done for tonight with we're recording. Tonight. Okay. With recording, we might still do other stuff in the shop. Okay. This is somewhere between our live content format and our mm. and our more formal, long form content. So, um, we I hope you enjoyed it. It's kind of a behind the scenes uh, live real reality kind of thing. And that has you gotta it. edit out everything I said. Uh, yeah, except I have to edit out everything he says. I, I got like up to camp a mouth for a minute. This is supposed to be <laughs> no edit, but I think I'm gonna have to do as much editing as any other video we ever make. So I hope you enjoyed it because I'm sure I'm gonna spend hours editing. I'm looking around at what's here. See how bright and nice that engine is. See how beautiful that head is. No, they and can't see. No, I'm talking to you, and you can yeah. see it's bright, nice orange. 
And then you look at that valve cover up there, it's kind of... Mm, you know large. what? It needs another coat of paint. It's a different can of paint. Okay, it needs, it needs that kind of paint. I think run. once we have the engine assembled, I'm going to get a fresh can of paint and just blast the whole thing. But since it all has a good base, like a oh. good base that's adhered real good, that's clean and everything, I if think you, it all... If you put a coat of that color over that, it'll look great. But that and that are not the same. Well, the engine, half of the engine is one orange and the other half is a different oh, orange. I didn't, I didn't know that. But it has paint on the whole thing. So Do we still good. have any of that heavy orange left? That really bright, bright, almost fluorescent yeah. orange on the cylinder head, that's the only stuff that we have left. Oh, we got to find out what color that is, and do you know where it is? Yeah, it's in the cabinet. Okay, I'll, we'll take it home, and I'll order some. Order? Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, then it just shows up. We don't have to drive all over to every store looking for the same color. Okay. That's dumb. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. This is our plan. This is what we do when we're not on camera, is we try and figure out what needs done. So that when we come here, we don't just go, uh... And, and the smart thing when you're in the shop, working in the shop, is always look at, well, what are we doing next? What's tomorrow? Do we need to order anything? Do we need to... See how nice this is? I cleaned it up. Oh, yeah. we found Lucas some... assembly lube. We found some Lucas assembly lube. So I'm going to use that on the bearings. Oh, it says it contains zinc, moly, and other high-pressure additives for maximum protection so during engine brigand soil. Wipe some of that on the cam and the lifters. Cam lifters yeah. Okay, there you go. But we have to put the pistons back in, and then we'll get that engine, the head gasket, all the other accessories patched back on. But it's like ready to go. Um, but, you know, other things took precedence tonight. I, but I, I know I'm not looking at the camera. I'm kind of looking around at what else I have to do. Yeah. And... Uh, we have a lot to do. There's no shortage of things to be done, but you can only do so much in a day, and you got to be willing. Talk to a friend on the phone tonight. I go, let's see, we have we have Kim's Dart, and I, my Valiant. We got to explain what the aluminum car was. We got the aluminum car. I go, yeah, and then and then we both have vans, and then there's the Jeep. I said, man, I know there's another car. I know there's another car. And he started talking about a Studebaker he liked. I go, oh, yeah, that's it. We own a Studebaker. <laughs> we have a Studebaker we don't know about. Who knows what happened? When you go to the grass and find an old Chevy, you might be a redneck. So, so I forgot we had a Studebaker. It's like I knew there was more. Are you sure there's not an old Chevy Nova over the hill somewhere? Well, if there was, I'd be putting that engine in it. Would you? Oh, I don't know. It depends how bad it was. I thought we were putting that Chevy engine in the Studebaker. Yeah, we might. We might put it in whatever comes up. Yeah, I, the plan was to put it in the Studebaker. There's lots of parts of an old Chevy over in the weeds up there. The whole subframe and everything. That was supposed to be the Studebaker frame. And we just haven't gotten to it yet. Maybe like when I'm 80. You know, if we had more garages and teams of people, we could keep them busy for okay. a while before we ran out of projects. Crack you know the that. whip and pay a minimum If we years. had eight bays and three teams of people, we would not run out of projects for five years. So, yeah, I'm going to have to make some hard, difficult decisions and get rid of some of these projects because they're just going to rot. Well, this one, it, it took longer than we wanted because we ended up doing a lot more. It always takes longer. I mean, it took way longer. We like it to be nice. Because we were going to fix an oil leak, we ended up fixing, putting a whole engine in, we ended up fixing a frame, Rebuilding uh, half the suspension that was something wrong. Remanufacture the whole uh, car. What else we do? Oh, you might put an automatic transmission in it. And, and so there's... Probably will, yeah. Okay, so it turned into a bigger project. Because I've looked at the stuff that came out of that manual transmission. It's, it's, it's yeah. pretty ugly. I, I don't know how much oh, bearings are in that gonna, transmission. I was going to drink that. And it had a heck of a whir. I mean, manual transmissions have a whirring kind of noise to them anyways, don't they? I can't put this where I put my drink normally because I was going to... drink it? I was going to take a swig in it. Well, I the, mean, it's the, got the, all the... The top, the top didn't look right. It's got zinc, moly, and other high-pressure additives. I think that's probably good for you. <sighs> this is they sell hard. that at health food stores, too. Uh, we'll probably do the next stage on a live stream. So check out our lives here in the shop. Uh, late week, we start at 10 p.m. Central. You know, it's November 7th. November 7th, I think. Yes. Is that right? Oh, man, now I'm on the clock to get this video and, out. And it 
71 degrees in the shop. We still have a little bit of... Uh, Isn't that amazing? We still have a little bit. We, we haven't started the fireplace here. yet. We should. we should just start up alive and... Live here? See if 1 o'clock in the morning people come in. People in other parts of the country, or other parts of the world. Outside the world. Yeah. yeah, they would stop in. Tavo would just be getting off work or something. Yeah, our friends in uh, Australia and those types of places. Tuesday nights, we do a live Tuesday. in the studio with the green screen. And this week we're doing something new, if you weren't aware. Uh, we talked about it during the last live, but this week at 7 central time, uh, we're going to do a new spot, and we're going to talk about a specific year. And we're going to talk about anything automotive related or automotive adjacent. Maybe not right at 7. We come on at 7. Right, so right. We'll sometime, do our regular. Sometime during we'll have a segment. Where we're we... going to do a, a probably, it, I think it could be a long segment. If people are enjoying we'll it, then we'll it do it longer, right? But the year that we're doing is 1970. So anything that you, as a viewer, like from the year 1970. If there's a car that you would have bought if you were there in 1970. If there's a performance item that you think is really great, if there was anything that happened 1970, not the decade, the year 1970. Some other day we might do 1975. The next, the next week we'll do another we'll year. We'll do a different year. And we're trying to do the years like the 50s, 60s, and 70s because maybe early 80s because those are the kind of the cars we're working on. Hey, we'll do it as we, maybe we'll let you decide what next. It was a viewer. That decided it was decided 19, 1970. 1970. So that's what we're doing. So, and then you can send pictures to his email for us to look at and discuss. So if you, you know, you don't have to just say something, you could actually send us stuff. And we'll uh, talk more about that during the live of where you can send that stuff. If you already know, then go ahead and send it our way and we'll know what we're looking at and how much time to allocate to that segment. Okay. The link. It's Buff Del Campo. Buff Del Campo at gmail.com. Send your pictures. Yeah, any kind of pictures. And, and put your screen name. Because put if your it screen says, name. If it says Bill Wiley, I'm going to say Bill Wiley, not what your screen name is. And then I tell the whole world what your real name is. I try not to do that. Okay, and we'll probably, <laughs> if you're in the live stream, we'll talk about the stuff that you sent us. If you're not in the live stream, we may or may not. So we'll try and talk about the stuff that people who are in the live are going to talk about. So try and be there if you're going to send stuff. And hopefully that gives you something interesting to think about. I know what I have already started putting together a little bit of content that we might we'll probably just breeze through some of the more topical content uh, just to get us in the vibe, as soon as, in the mood of the as soon as they said 1970, man, a car popped into my mind and I know what I'm going to talk about. I wasn't even born yet. You weren't even born yet. So that's it? Yeah, we have to end. We have to end. We're going to come to an abrupt end. No, okay. you say goodbye. You do your goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good night, morning, afternoon, whatever it is. See okay. you Tuesday, I hope. We'll see you next time. I didn't want to do a 20-minute bit, but we did anyways. Oh, I think, I think I did our